Friday afternoon, we're in the Wonky Willow workshop. Well, we're not in the Wonky Willow workshop, we're in the Dave's workshop. We Wonky Willow. With, with the Wonky Willow. <laughs> and there's a bit of a green elephant. Hmm. Well, you say green room. elephant, but it was actually a bit of a white elephant, I believe. Was it? Well, I believe that the well, British yeah, yeah. government ordered them. Hmm. And by the time they had actually ordered X amount of gun tractors, and by the time Land Rover had put them together as gun tractors, we had basically been converted to missiles. So nobody really required a gun anymore. So it's a Land Rover? So it's a Land Rover. A Land Rover. Not a white elephant or a green elephant. a big elephant. Land Rover. Or even so an elephant in the room. So where's, where's the bonnet and the wings? Well, so we'll go. as most people will realise, it's a forward control. Ah, right. So we'll get or as the Americans call them. I'll get the wee mobile camera going, and you can talk us around it. What do the Americans call them? COEs. COEs. Cab over the engines. Cab over engines. So let me see. See the trouble is this is too big. I can't even it, fit well, in. This is this has been the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just tripped over it again. Right. <laughs> well, we'll come back to this video when I've got my arm in a sling or something. But Neil anyway. has pointed out right. the obvious problem with a 101 in a small garage is they are so just too big. Now when this 101 came here it wasn't actually a problem because well there wasn't that much of it to be honest. There was a bit of a cab, a bit of a cab, a chassis and a back axle. Was and, that it? Well, yeah. Yeah that was it. Yeah. It was just a so front bit of the cab, the floor, the back bit of the cab, the roll cage and the chassis and a back axle, which so, at some point we shall, Neil at this point will magically flash up an image of what I'll put some photos in. Got. I'll put some photos in. So we've got, unfortunately didn't they come with original wheels, did it? No, well, it didn't come with the front axle. <laughs> <laughs> it front came axle. with the back axle and the original back wheels, but it didn't come with the front axle, nah. because the front axle had been sold out as el elsewhere. Hmm. So where do we start? The 101... Oh, the one, this well, let's start. Let's be boring and start at the front. Yeah. This 101 was always the parts truck. If you actually type in the number, the, uh, the original chassis number, this has been pretty much the parts truck its entire life. And then it was scrapped as the parts truck. And even when it was scrapped and bought, it was still a parts truck, which is why I got so little of it. It actually came with the original engine as well, but the top valley gasket had rotted out and it was basically just a solid mass. The chassis, the chassis was so bad that I had to take the paper templates off the black bitumen tar, you know, the military, the military tar stuff that they, that they put on. That was still intact, but the actual, the under seal, the actual steel, the cross members, the outriggers, they were all gone. All that was left okay. was little bits of rotten steel, but you had a perfect, perfect so, sort of So it was, a, a, ghost, of, it was a ghost of a shadow. On the tar. A ghost of a shadow you got. Ghost of a chassis you got. He's, he's away doing the ghost words again. Ghost of a chassis. He's, he's, he's thrown me off. He's thrown me <laughs> off Sorry. talking. Talking about so nearly, nearly saying naughty words so again. So this, but this front body work looks great. You were, lucky, you were lucky to get the body work like that. The, no, well, the front body was actually intact when Alan and I went to collect it. And the, the boy who was digging it out of the bushes, and when I say digging it out of the bushes, it was, the bushes were completely, completely, you couldn't even see it. He then pulled this out of the bushes. He then put the digger around the back of the bumper and caved all the front in, which was perfectly straight at that time. Oh. So the front was now all kind of smashed in and caved in. So we managed to get most of the front back out with a couple of bottle jacks and various things. And there was a scar and some bits and pieces that I couldn't fix. And I've always thought, now, I'm not a restoration person. I know there's lots of people, including Neil behind the camera, who's just restored these Series 3. I don't really restore things. I like to kind of make my own variations. And I always thought the 101 was a little bit, a little bit, well. A bit naked. Lacking design, shall we say, on the front. So this car actually, I named this car Spike. This, this is Spike the Bulldog from Tom and Jerry. So that, I put a little fake snout to cover the, the mm. scars and the tears oh, and the rivets. So that, that's basically there just as a decorative 
piece. It does nothing at all. Maybe at one time it might feed the heater, but right now it's a piece of the old barbecue. It's barbecue mesh. And I made a little aluminium box up. Well, you're giving away your secrets. The front bumper was also bent in with the digger and then pulled out with the digger. So we covered the bent bit with, uh, with my own sort of bumper out, which at some point I may, the winch actually fits in the middle there. So I may sit the winch in there, the winch, sit the winch in there. We might get around to that eventually. So yeah, these bits are basically covering up the, the horrors, the scars. And yeah, the original paintwork, I'd like to say that I spent hours and hours restoring the original paintwork, but obviously I didn't. I simply stripped all the paint off. It's actually what I call the COVID paint job, because the second time round that we weren't allowed into people's houses to decorate, we were basically told to stay at home. So you had to find something to paint. So basically I spent the, whatever it was, four or six weeks with chisels, and because paint stripper wouldn't touch it, and I basically scraped all the paint off the whole car. Now, if you go further back, ah, you start these, to see would, these would have had the a one hundred one. Uh, it's the is a lot of car, but the army paint. It's like it's a it's got a radar absorbing paint, hasn't it? And it's thankfully, thankfully, most of the paint because the army, as Neil's saying there, <clears throat> the army paint these things. I'd say annually, but I think more than that. And, and, and basically in the back here was full of leaves and full of soil, excellent mm -hmm. topsoil, full of mushrooms and stuff. And because of the neglect, a lot of the paint had actually started to sort of come off in shells. Mm. But the original military paint, oh boy, was it stuck. And you can't even, even no. a grinder, everything, it, it sort of turns it, I, it just turns into to, a sticky... It's like a waxy... <laughs> terrible yeah, stuff. Yeah. So sharp chisels like, and scraping, basically. Like tar. Basically removed all of the paint, and then we painted it all bronze green, and it was all nice and shiny, shiny and bronze green. I think there's still a couple of bits that I haven't rubbed back down. But I don't, I didn't, it, it didn't look, it wasn't... Ah, it just looks fake, doesn't the it? The shiny just, bronze green against the, the uh, old kind of galvanised... Just doesn't look right. It just it didn't look very nice. Well, that looks so we gave, it, we gave it a little patina. So we basically we rubbed it down and we gave it a little patina. Yeah, but in a subtle way, not a... Not a well, what I was saying earlier, I think we said in, on one of my last videos, was you don't just go at it like an old, an old sort of shabby sheet dresser and just knock bits of paint off. You've got to try and imagine that, that that wears because that's where they get in. That wears because that's where the handle goes up and down. You've got various little bits and pieces that basically, that just wear. So any of these edges you knock off, any of these bits you knock off because that's the bit that, that wear as people get in and out. Any of the little bits where the canvas would sit, you rub them, you rub them off. Again, any of these edges where people would be kind of loading stuff, And I never really done the floor because it took me so long to scrape the floor back. And I actually made all these up. I made all these up. Now you could tell it was locked in and there was nothing else to do because when I cut these, I found a way of putting a bolt in the vise and actually putting new rounded edges on all of these because it was covered and there was nothing else to do. <laughs> so these are the original ones. You can see uh, the, I mean, how there's any galvanise left on any of this when it, the whole thing was full of logs and leaves, moss, mushrooms, all of that was all in there for, we reckon 20 to 25 years she sat in the bushes. Strings. You were lucky to rescue it, or maybe unlucky to rescue it. Well, I do love it, and I, and I, and I, do, I do desperately want it it's, it's, finished. It's just your, your own Tonka toy, isn't it? It's, it is a little Tonka toy. So what I did with it is I, I rebuilt the chassis, basically front to back. Chassis is completely rebuilt. I had, originally I put a V8 and auto in it, which is what... Because you used to have the V8. Done. Originally they came with the V8, didn't they? Yeah, they were a V8 and, oh, a terrible, terrible, terrible gear stick. Oh, terrible gear stick. But no, that's definitely not a V8 that's in there now. So we, I had a V8 in it and I had an automatic in it and I had had a bad couple of weeks with a V8 in my trials car and the petrol in my other trials car and I remember coming into the garage and thinking 
why have I got a petrol engine in that? So I got the engine lift out and I hauled out the V8 and I put a TDI and R380 in it. So as you can see, TDI, 300 TDI and R380 manual, manual gearbox oh, yeah. hiding away in there. Now, this is the thing that I don't quite understand. That why Land Rover made such a song and dance about the gear stick. I mean, if you've ever been in a 101 mm. or driven, driven a 101, I mean, the, between first and second gears about three feet. And then left and right's about a foot and a half. You've got to almost give it to the passenger to put it into whatever that second. So whereas, so maybe we should just jump in. Well, we'll jump sure. in, you. Aye, let's, let's maybe, jump in. Maybe, maybe we oh. should film you getting in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure of mine. Where's the step? There well, what you, what you may have noticed is I don't actually have the ring. The bit, the bit in the missing in the middle. Because I don't actually have the 101 the original axis. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure by now some people have went, oh... Where did the six studs go? <laughs> I have five studs. So you get five studs all round? Or just five studs all round, so we put it on Discovery axles. Because ah. as we all know, the problem with a 101 is gearing. Oh, of course. Well, I'm not quite sure we should really sit in these seats because I gave them a wee wash. You gave them a wee wash? A wee wash. Well, when did you? So what we'll do is I'll, I'll jump up, I'll get something to sit on, Neil. Right, well, I'll tell you what. You jump up and see what you can see. What you can see and I'll... If you I'll give a wee walk around. Take okay. a little so you've walk got, around and I'll see if I can find something to sit with. You've got a radiator in here. Just lying. Is it just lying? That's the heater. That's your heater matrix. That's the heater matrix. That's, that's basically as far as we got when Covid stopped and Aye. I had to go back to work. Ach, I know. It's, it had its plus points, didn't it? Right, Neil. Right, here we are up in the old 101. Right. So you're yeah, the way up, up there. in the old 101 here. You're the way up. Now see, right. so we fitted. Oh, hang on. Right. We fitted the. See, I need a bit of wee drinks while they're up there. We fitted the. Right, hang on. Give me two seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, coming up, boy. I'll, oh, oh. I'll get an aerial photograph of this. <laughs> an aerial photograph. An aerial video of this. Right. <laughs> that is. It has got a bolt in it, has it? Yep. Right, hi, ma. There we go. Right, so. I've kind of got you in. So is it run? Right, so we've we'll, we'll got to the stage. Well, <laughs> as anyone knows who's ever driven a 101, you basically, your first gear's down here, your second gear's up here, your third gear's down here, and fourth gear's away back here someplace. No, that's no ideal. And I can't remember, what's, a, what's the reverse? Is the reverse... The reverse back here? I can't remember or not. Of, a range of four speed? Uh, no, I can't, no. I can't remember. No, it's, well, no, mine's a five speed, so I can't. Yeah, no, it's back at our range, it's same, actually, actually right. the same as an R380. So basically what we done was we took the, we took, the R380 gearbox is now back there. So the gear stick back there is obviously no good. So we simply just took a little bolt and a little pipe, and a little bolt and a little pipe, and we bent a lovely little bar up, so the R380 now just simply does, one, two, Three, four, that's five. perfect. And fives reverses back there. Aye. So, that's the way it should be. Well, it's all to do with the sort of the heights that you make this one and the heights that you make that one that you could increase or shorten your throw. So basically, I just kept that one the same height as that one. Aye. So it's and technically, well, it's exactly the same as it is on just, just bring like it a forwards. Aye. So I don't know why Land Rover had this kit, but I, I just don't understand it. So what we've got is. 5 speed R380, 300 TDI, Discovery, I believe, is it Discovery? Yep, Discovery handbrake. We modified little pieces up, so that's your high and low, and that's your diff lock. Or is that your high and low? That's your diff lock. Mm. Aye, so it's your. Uh, aye. So that's all your bits and pieces. So basically, everything on the R380 works from up. Yeah. So when you're saying it's a diff lock, it's a central diff and it's a diff in the, the gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. Diff so it's diff locking lock. front and rear prop shaft, so yeah. it's not it's not a differential lock. No, no, we hope that we never require no. that. We're never really going to get that into this sort of situation. No. So we kept the old because there's no bunnet space, so this is this is there the problem with forward controls. So that's the reservoir, 
Top tip, Freelanders are superb. Freelander comes with little sort of remotes so you can take the little reservoir and then you can put, so the reservoir, the, the master cylinder that's in here, they've got little, res, little, what would you call them, just a little adapters with pipes on it. So mm. rather than the reservoir sitting on the top of the master cylinder, you take out the master cylinder, you take out the reservoir, throw that away, the little Freelander things fit in the top and then your pipes come over and they Oh, sit. perfect. So that's your, that's the brakes. So we've got a... Uh, right, hang on, hang on. Clutch. Hang on, hang on. He's, he's coming down. Hang on. I'll need to rearrange my... Ugh. Hope that doesn't work either. Hang on. <laughs> See, I hope you're getting that in film somewhere, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we've got what, some pedals down here. It came with it came with a clutch pedal. So I don't know why I didn't use that as a clutch pedal. I was going to say, yes. So it came with a clutch well, pedal. You threw that away when you put the auto well, on. Well after I put the clutch pedal onto the brake and I then put the discovery servo onto the clutch brake. Can't quite remember why I did that. But basically the discovery the discovery double servo is up underneath oh, it's up there. In there. And so that's now and the brakes are awesome. Discs front and back because it's Discovery Axles. Of course, aye. So I had no clutch pedal. So we basically took the clutch pedal out of a 90. We took the two brackets off the, the well, the mountain brackets off the bottom and put them on the front. And we basically put the sprung. So the clutch is actually oh, pretty decent. The pedal, the throttle pedal, I can yeah. think that's a. I can't remember, I think it's a Discovery pedal. Aye, I think it's a Discovery similar. throttle pedal. Yeah. And it's a discover a discovery throttle cable, which I'm going to try and get a longer one because that's it there, which isn't very, it's a bit unsightly. So that's what that is, that's the throttle. So so your question is earlier, does it drive? It actually drives it? very, very well. Well don't because do that, because I'm standing in the wheel. We also no we're not driving just now. <laughs> Nobody drives too, it's that big in this garage. So we also fitted a defender steering column, which is down onto the discovery power steering box on its side, feeding the arm, which is going back to the relay. So we have... Oh, so you get power steering we as have, well. So oh. she has power steering, oh she my has God. power brakes, she has disc brakes, clutch is quite light, she has a five-speed gearbox. The only thing that I didn't have at the time, because it is locked down, is I had a one-to-two transfer on big wheels. I think it's going to be slightly tall geared. It should have had a one-to-four, but when I was talking to Alan Crow, I said to Alan, I says, I've only got a one-to-two, he says, I'll just stick it in and it'll be fine, as Alan does. And I said, but it'll know poo in fifth. And Alan's answer is, then he put it in fifth. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'll be finding downhill. So, technically, I would say now I've got I've got a, a little series one with a, a 300 TDI and a 182 transfer, and she does. <clears throat> rumor has it 100 miles an hour, <laughs> and this has got taller tires on it. So even downhill, but I don't want to be in here when it does. She does 100 miles an hour. Excellent. So made my own little back in here. Made my own little dashboard as Aye. well because we didn't have one of them. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hang so on. we'll right. put this. Wait, oh, we'll put this steering go. wheel on the wrong way around. Look. Oh. So you're missing your still top badge for that steering wheel. So I need that. Yeah, could do. We still top badge. Oh, there you go. There's yours. So it didn't. It didn't have a dashboard. I did have the little ends. I did have the little ends. So I made up my own dashboard, which has now got a. A satellite speedo. Satellite speedo. Yeah, which so basically means I didn't have to worry about uh -huh. trying to put a cable from here down to there. Oh, what's so I, I just picked up one of these things and when you put it on, when you put on the ignition, right. you get a little look. It didn't work, see? Oh. Oh. And it oh. goes back. And so far, I mean, I've only had it up to around the sort of 25 miles an hour, oh. up around the posh houses. So it just seems to work. Well, that's good. And to be honest, she's probably going to be more accurate than me putting a cable from yes. the wrong head, the wrong cable, and the wrong gearbox, <laughs> and the wrong tyres, on the wrong diff, and the wrong transfer box. So, yeah, <laughs> but yeah she's all she's all wired. She all yeah. runs and she drives. Oh, really? She actually drives incredibly well. The strangest thing about a 101, if you've ever driven a 101 or, or any sort of forward control, is when you go, when you steer, especially going backwards, you steer and you move left or right. Well, because, you're, because you're sitting above the You're steering. basically, because you're sitting. So right. when you actually do go to r drive it for the first time or reverse it for the first time, yeah, it's quite a strange sensation that you sort of go that direction or go that direction. 
Right. What have we got? What? The key to a 101 is come out so, backwards. So Always come is, out backwards. So the thing is, because it's so big, I can't even do a full walk round. So you're not a million miles away from getting this done and dusted and out in the road then. So we've got the so aluminium tanks in. Got an aluminium tank made. I want to actually box. See the, the, the shape. I've kind of shaped these. I want to kind of shape that oh, all the way, basically, all the way along there. Well, all the lights are there. The exhaust's all on it. She drives. I have oh, basically. I've got the brackets for the intercooler. So if you come up up front here, coming up. I've got the top bracket for the intercooler, oh, which is looking oh, a bit squint just now. So the radiator's all in the mounted. I've got to put the in top bracket on the intercooler, various bits and pieces. So if you come along here, we should actually have had a, a torch, of which I have. Aye, the only way, the only way that I could get the TDI, the intercooler pipe, is now out in the wheel well. So we made oh, up aye. a little bracket there. So the intercooler now comes out. <laughs> it runs along there and then runs back into the turbo. Perfect. Which I've still got that panel to make up to actually st obviously Aye, stop the, the, the water going in there. But in theory, out in the footwell, in the rain and the muck, it can only actually help to cool, I would say. Well, I suppose that's true. Eh? <laughs> I would say that's yeah, the thing. That'll do, right? So all of these, all of these, if we're in here, all of these outriggers, all of these outriggers had to be made, basically. These are all you, you can buy them. But I just... I just made them all up. You made them up. And if you look along here... I don't know if your torch is doing the job, but we'll see I... So the better. outriggers were all made, the chassis sections were all made, the back outriggers were all made, <laughs> and it goes on and on. Even the bump stop brackets were completely rotten. They had to be all made. The back so, cross member, the back cross member, actually it sort of comes in three bits, so you're almost like two outriggers and then a centre piece. And it was all made. <laughs> so when you talk about a basket case, this was really a great basket case. This it was, was a complete was, basket case. It was In fact, there wasn't actually enough of the basket left right. to really call it a basket case. So you could have just about fitted it all in the digger's bucket. If, if it wasn't a 101 and it wasn't as rare as 101s were, it, it, was, it was definitely beyond repair. Yeah. So you've got these... Because that's your roll cage, that's a steel panel, that's an aluminium panel. So that, that there is your steel panel that goes down onto your framework, which is then bolted onto here. So in theory that, that yeah, weight transfers. transferred down through here, down through here, down through here. Right. But these, these were rotten from there down, it was just, it was missing. Not... So they're all basically rebuilt, and I know you can buy them, but... Well, I'm sure the photograph that will Photographs that you'll see in here will give folk a good idea. So if you come over here, I brought this down from oh, the. Yeah. I brought this down. This was the. This was the inside. This was the handbrake. Oh, so that maybe show you just what we were dealing with. That that was the. Yes. That was the handbrake. Everything was absolutely gone. Ah, it was a brave, brave. But I really, I've really actually, I really enjoyed it. Oh, it's been a fantastic, fantastic thing to see it. But I enjoyed it because it, it wasn't, it, it's not a restoration. No. I, I, Do you know, it's not a restoration. And it's a challenge, project. it's a very good it's, challenge. Everything on it has been changed. Super. Even the, the door tops. So I always loved, I always love a series one door top. I always like proportions. Proportions are everything. So a 101 has quite an ugly bumper. So we sort of brought the bumper around. The door, the full door top and 101 door tops are expensive, especially the aluminium ones. And I always like the panel, the extra panel that you get on a Series 1. So these are Series 1 door tops. So that's original. Uh, so they've been shortened in height, obviously, because right. that panel's been shortened. So they've been shortened there. We've had to add a little bit on the front and we have to change that angle. I believe that's a Series 3 front glass. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll need to actually cut up a perspex slide for the back. But it gives you that different... Again, it just, it's, it's just my 101 compared to everybody else's right. 101. So you've got sectioned door tops. So the door tops have been, yeah, they've right. been sectioned from a Series 1. That's fantastic. And they're galvanised, so in theory, I don't really need to... Well, apart from the rest of the bit you will do. Yeah. <laughs> no, Any that's... Questions? They'll maybe get a little bit of paint one day. 
That's a stone cure, Dave. So that's speak. That's speak. Speak. Which we need to get round to. So it's not. So what is it? Speak the elephant, or is it speak the one hundred and one? Speak the bulldog. Speak the bulldog. Speak the bulldog. So there's a little picture here, if I can remember, the little question that's right there, Luke. Oh. I seen it earlier on, which is why I'm asking the question. That, that's what was on the front. And if anybody knows what oh. that is, it's either a palm tree or a radio mast, I would say. That's what was painted on the front of Spike. Mm -hmm. So somebody out there must know what yeah, that what actually that is. Insignia is. Yeah. Somebody must know what and that is. And what's this? Oh, is. this is Stumpy. That's Stumpy. Superb. Right, that's us. That's us for today. So we'll uh, see Cheerio to, to Spike. Next time you see it, it'll maybe be on the road. <laughs> Who knows? It has been uh, driving down for a couple of years. Yeah, but it's, but it's uh, never actually made it to the, to pro the MOT properly man. on the road. To see. It needs to go to the MOT man. Yes, to get a registration. Because it's never actually been registered on the road. Aye, aye. So it needs to go for its MOT. Straight and from the, the army. The DVLA will give right. me a, a new number plate. Aye. I've still got the original number plate and all the plates, but I don't oh, well. have the, well, that's, that's the road be, going. That should permission. be straightforward enough, hopefully. Yeah. So anyway, that's us from the Wonky Willow Workshop. Wonky Willow Workshop. And we'll see what we come up with next week. Maybe we should actually do something in the Wonky Willow Workshop. Well, rather we should than just do. talk about it. We can do. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.